Welcome back to another exciting episode of Aaron's Opinion, the podcast for blind people, where we talk about critical issues in the blindness community. I'm Aaron Richmond. By the way, tonight, like all other episodes, is of course copywritten by me, Aaron Richmond, and Aaron's Opinion. Thank you. You can watch us right here on YouTube, where so many of you do, along with listening us, listening to us on iTunes or wherever you want to get a podcast, okay? Uh, don't forget email address to participate in the show and to send in, you know, information, talk to me, ask questions, Aaron's opinion six at gmail.com. Telephone contributions, text messages, nasty voicemails. We, we've got you covered. One, two, four, zero, six, eight, one, nine, eight, six, nine. Don't forget, follow on Facebook, follow on Twitter, even consider commenting, commenting below on this video um as so many of you do not do so i wish i could have some more audience participation uh and uh don't forget if you want to join my patreon um or to become a patron on my patreon as we say i would appreciate the support disclaimer the following episode will contain uh material that will be sensitive um so if you do not like hearing sensitive uh issues do not listen to this episode this is not a particularly happy one. Um, for clarity and legality, uh, names, all names have been changed or will be changed as we go through this very serious conversation. Hey, I got a question. What were you doing on New Year's Eve? I was sitting at home, okay? But apparently on the other end of the microphone, on the other end of the string here, Daisy joins us. She's blind. She wasn't sitting at home. On New Year's Eve, she chose to go to SeaWorld, um, and she would like to share with us uh, the facts and her opinion. Um, and it is important to say, you know, that this is an opinion show. Um, she would like to share with us her opinion and her feelings about a story that occurred to her at SeaWorld. So walk me through this from all of the information, beginning, middle, and end. So that when I do maybe give it to this other friend I mentioned before who wants to hear this, all of this has to be 100% clear. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for um, taking the time to, um, you know, to give me the chance to share my story you're with always, everybody. You're always welcome on this podcast. You're always welcome. Thank you. So um, 2020 had been a crazy year for all of us, you know, um, and I thought, well, you know what, why not go to SeaWorld um, and kind of close out the year in a fun way? And I mean, roller coasters are absolute fun for me and in my family. So we decided we would go to Sea World and make a whole day of it. And when I say a whole day of it, I mean 12 hours. So we got there at about 11.30 a.m. And uh, I connected with my friend who was there with me and my child. So we decided that we would go ahead and purchase our, um, they, per they give you a, a ticket that you can buy you can purchase for food so we went ahead and purchased our ticket for all day dining and um <clears throat> so then we went we said okay let's eat let's let's go on a few rides before we eat um so we went on oh boy let me see we went on journey to atlantis which is a water ride it's like a roller coaster we went to um, Crack It, which is a wild roller coaster kind of ride as well. So then we decided, okay, let's eat. And we went in and ate for a little bit. And we walked around a lot, obviously. And it started to get warm. It was a rather, I would say about 84 degrees that day. Um, Fahrenheit and so then we said okay we should try to go to another water ride while it's still sunny and warm so then we decided to go to um infinity falls and um as we approach um 
uh, first off, I am where I I will use a a cane to walk with, uh, and my friend as well. Um, okay, so, my- so for the for for the record, just just to just to clarify, so are both you and your friend blind? Yes, both okay. of us are blind. That's, that's that that that's important. Okay, yes. so to to help our listeners understand, okay, you were you you're you're using a cane. It's very you said something. <laughs> Very, very, very important that I that I would like to clarify. And in, in my opinion, you use a cane to tell other people, to tell sighted people that you're blind, not yes. not to help you to walk. That's it's a critical distinction. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And then what? So you walk up. So then uh, we walk up to the where the um, infinity falls. Um, my son said. Um, Oh, you know, there's an entrance for how, um, how old I'm just I just in this particular oh, case, how old, so, it's, it's very important to, to give out as many facts oh, as, yes. as many facts. My, to, we really have to build the case here. So how, how, how old is your son? My son is 12. OK, um, so, you know, lawfully a child, but a child nonetheless old enough to know what's going on, old enough to have an understanding of what's going on. OK, yes, oh, yeah, and then we'll, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So um, he and he he's very tall, so he actually looks older, <laughs> older than, t- than twelve. <laughs> so he's one of those people who could like pass for eighteen. Like that's how tall he is. Yeah, close to that. Yeah, he's he's like five nine. So okay, he's, no, he's, he's uh, okay. Well, that's taller than me. Okay, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah, he's tall. <laughs> so um, so we walk up. He said, "Oh, you know, we could go to the wheelchair entrance that will get us in there faster." And so there was um there was a worker who was standing right there at that entrance. So then I said, Oh, can we go to this entrance? And she said, just a minute, hold on. And she said, I'll be right back. So she's gone for like literally 10 minutes. So there was another person in line, um, a young child. He said, Oh, why don't you go that way? Um, There's, you know, you can go to the quick queue line um, that way to the left. And I said, oh, you're right. Uh, we should just do that. Instead of waiting on her, we don't know when she's going to come back. So we started walking over to the queue line, um, quick queue line. And um, so then we got halfway up there and the lady came running. She's like, oh, um, you can't be on, you can't be in the line. You can't ride this. I said, what? She said, um, my supervisor told me that you cannot get on this ride. I said, but this doesn't make any sense. She said, that's what I'm telling you. So I went to pull my phone out and she's like, no, no, I am not giving you permission to record me. No, no. I said, well, I'm letting you know that I am recording you. So she gets all frantic and, uh, and then she just stopped talking. So I said, well, you know, I, I just told you I'm recording and you keep talking. So then she stopped (laughs) and then she just walks away. So then I said, um, okay, this, this is weird. Um, and let me also emphasize that a week before, um, my friend invited us there and we went, uh, with a different set of friends there and, um, we rode those rides, no problem. So, this is alarming to me. I'm hearing this, you know, I'm like, okay, she must not be familiar with, you know, people with disabilities. Okay. And she's- so just, just, just so I understand, I, I might've misunderstood, but just, just to clarify it. So you had, you had in fact been permitted to ride this particular ride, Infinity Falls in, in the past, correct or no? Yes. C- correct. Mm-hmm. So you had physically ridden this particular ride before. Okay. That's very important. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then um, we, pre- she, the, the, um, she left and then she, I guess, I guess she called her supervisor and the supervisor came over and said, you are not permitted to ride this ride. And I said, well, can I just ask you why she said based on our rules you cannot ride this I said but this doesn't make any sense to me um and she said well I'm just telling you what our rules are 
I said, but the rule doesn't make any sense to me. What's the danger? What's the issue? Where is it written that I cannot ride this? And she gets um, kind of defensive. And I said, well, can you just show me where you guys have this in writing? This doesn't make any sense. So then she said, you need to get out of the line. I'm getting security right now. So then I'm like, I'm still baffled because none of it makes any sense to me at this point. I'm thinking, okay, they're just, you know, not understanding that because I'm visually impaired, it doesn't mean that I can't ride this. I've ridden everything else in this park. What's the issue? So, so then I proceed into the line more. um, And next thing I know, I'm at the top of the line. And um, security comes and he had his arms out across. So think of the the bars, the two handlebars kind of on each side. So he put his arms across. So basically blocking my path. So I took one step forward and his arms were right there. He's like, you can't go anywhere. I said, what are you doing? He's like, well... You cannot get on this. I said, but I don't understand what's going on. Nobody's able to tell me why. Where is it written that I can't go on? Why is it that last week we were permitted to go on and this week it's we're not? Did this rule change overnight? And if so, where is this written? He said, I don't know, but you cannot get on this. And I, so again, I'm still baffled. I'm standing there like, I'm scratching my head thinking this is this this is just weird. None of it makes sense. No one can even read out a rule to me, show me anything in writing. And all I'm getting is this pushback. You can't get on. You can't get on. But no real explanation as to why. So then another manager comes, the top manager at this point, and he says, well, Based on the rules of the manufacturer, we are not allowed to um, let anyone with visual impairments on this ride. I said, what manufacturer rules? I've never heard such thing. And he said, well, it's a safety issue. We can't let you on. And if you don't get out of the sign right now, um, it's going to be harder to get you out because if you get on the boat, we won't be able to get you out. It'll be, you'll make things more, you know, difficult for yourself. So at this point, I'm surrounded by the security and this manager. And then um, a few minutes later, I hear the security saying um, Orange County police. And I'm like, what? And before I know it, there were Um, one Orange County police showed up and they are circling me and uh, the police said you have to remove yourself from the line and I said all I'm asking is for a reason why am I being told to remove myself from the line why can I not get on this ride why was it permitted before and now it's not when did this rule change show it to me in writing So I kept saying that to him and he said, I don't know any of those answers, but I'm told that you cannot get on this ride and you have to respect the rules of the park and you have to remove yourself or I'm going to have to arrest you. I said, arrest me. I haven't done anything. And he said, well, if you are not going to agree to get out of the sign, I'm going to arrest you for trespassing and um, without a warning. So, um, well, he said, I'm going to arrest you for trespassing with a warning. Um, And then I said, well, that doesn't, (laughs) that's not what I want, of course, you know? And so um, I, I kept saying to him, can you just show me where this is in writing? Because last week, as a, and I said, as a matter of fact, December 22nd was when we were here with my friends and there were no issues. Now you're telling me there is an issue. 
so then I said, my son starts crying hysterically, like, you know, um, because it's obviously very, very traumatic for a child of that age to be around a police, to be around law enforcement. It would be very scary to suddenly oh see law enforcement, per, uh, you know, n- nothing personal, but with everything that's been going on around the world, that would be for a child, that would be very scary all of a sudden. Yes. It was yeah. very scary. Um, right. We were circled by them. And then, you know, they're telling us they're going to arrest us. So he's crying hysterically and I'm trying to calm him down. I'm saying, you know, it's okay. We're, we're going to figure this out. Just, you know, just take it easy. And then the cops is trying to push me out of the way. He's saying, move, I need you to move, move. I said, wait, my son is really in distress. Let me calm him down. And, and then I turned to him and I said, you know what? I'm not here for me. Really, I just want my son to have a good time. Can you just let him ride this and we, we'll call it a day. Forget that I want to ride it. Let my son go on and um, let him have a good time because he's in so much distress. If this can kind of help him calm down, just let him ride it. So then they said, okay. So my son started to walk over towards the, um, towards the ride again, towards the top. Um, and then my, the manager pulled my son aside and he said, well, are you considered visually impaired as well? And my son said, yes. And, um, he said, well, technically you can't ride this then. And he sent my son back to me. He said, you need to go along with your mom. You can't, you can't ride this. So now it's more tears, more pushback from all of them. So now I'm really furious. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. We were able to ride this last, last week. My child rode this three times in a row. Now there's an issue. This doesn't make any sense. So then... Um, they, the police started yanking on my arms. He said, you need to get out of this line. Let's go. Let's go. And I said, no, I can't. I, I can't let you just shove me around. Keep your hands off of me, please. Stop touching me. Stop pulling me. And so then, I mean, my friend, she was in total shock. She yeah. just well, what there. was the, What was she doing this entire time? She just stood there, oh, and they just kept so pushing she just, her. So, in other in other words, your your friend just 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 to, just to mull this over and clarify, you're saying that your friend just sort of stood there and just sort of, I'm I'm not saying she went along with it, but just you just philosophically, she just kind of stood there and just kind of didn't really say much, or she was kind of quiet, or just like she was watching she or... wasn't saying much. She just stood there, and the cops kept pushing her along, like you know putting their hands on her back and moving her along to, for us to get out of the line. So um, she stayed right next to me though. She wouldn't just, she didn't just leave me and say, okay, I'm out of this one. She stood right next to me the whole time. She just was so in shock that she froze. Like she wasn't able to Mm -hmm. say a whole lot. Um, So I did most of the talking because I was like, I just want explanations. I just want to know what's going on. Um, and so, um, when the police started tugging on my arms and I told him to leave us, you know, do not touch me, please keep your hands off. Um, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to get out of the line. I just need you to understand since you're here, I want a police report stating that these people are denying me access. Outstanding. Outstanding. It's that's magni- that is magnificent. As far as I'm concerned, I am definitely actually you don't have a choice. I'm giving this video to one of to this person I told you about. Um, this this is as I feared. This is far more concerning than I ever thought this would be. Um, and that was a a magnificent a magnificent magnificent thing to say to them to make it known to them that well now that you're here and already already going to bother me why don't we just make sure that you make sure to fill out a police report to have this in writing that this happened 
oh, do I love this case? Oh, this is good. This well, is really, I, you know, after that was, this... uh, of all the ways you could have handled it, that was probably, I mean, again, I'm going to ask him to get more information, but that was probably a very, very good thing to say. So at this point, um, they had already called up a backup police. Um, you know, there's, you know, the second police officer showed up. So there's now there's two officers, security guard. Right. Uh, and, 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 by, and by the way, and, and understand, you know, um, I am someone, you know, I'm a, I'm a very um, patriotic person. Uh, I, I support the police a thousand percent. Okay. So let, so let, so let that be known. The, the police have a job to do. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, I am you know, pro and the other, police myself. Well, great. And, you know, and of course you, you have to try, try to understand, you know, understand as I'm sure you do all, all facets of the emotions, you know, when they were walking up to you and discovered that you had a disability, like, can you imagine how shocking that was for the police and how scared they probably were of you the entire time? I mean, again, you know, you're, you're probably in the right. Um, but still, you know, they're dealing with a stranger. So if I, if I, if I had been a police officer or, or, or if I was in that position, I, I certainly would have called for backup too. Cause you're, you're dealing with a stranger with a disability, that's very scary, philosophically in, in this situation, yeah. And of course, um, the initial uh, arrival, neither of them announced their name. I just kept saying, who are you? What is your name, you know? Well, they didn't, so, mean they didn't, they didn't announce to which department no. they work for? No. Well, no, then, 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 this, then we really, we really need to do some, someone else really needs to know about this. That's, I have never, um, I mean, personally in my own life, I've never been uh, a pro, I've never been stopped by a police officer, but I'm sure if I had, they would say, they would say what department they're from, right? Um, or at least I would, if I'm, if I was a successful police officer, I would say what department I work for. It's kind of good to know, you know, after, after all, you were at SeaWorld, right? You, you knew you were at SeaWorld, right? Right. Okay. So if, if a police officer comes up to you, they, um, mo without, without any question, I've never heard of a police officer not announcing their, their unit or, or their, their department or their affiliate to which they work that, um, that's weird. I don't know about that, but that's there, weird. It's very it was, strange. It was kind of strange for me at first. All the way, kind of, all the way, all the way strange. Oh, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So and go I ahead. So, saying, so, so, so then what? Yeah, go ahead. So then I kept saying, who are you? You know, what is your name? And he's like, well, I'm officer C from, um, Orange County. Okay. So and they said, did. Okay. Well, the, okay. So to clarify, he, he did, he did, cause we, we, we're going to have to get the facts all lined up. So he did mm -hmm. clarify what department he was, he worked for, right? Yes. After okay. I asked. Okay. So that's okay. That, that's critical because then you said he wouldn't tell you who he was. Well, you, he kind of did. Um, he said what department he worked for. And then he gave his initial, you know, in this day and age, I can understand you know, wanting to be a little bit, wanting to maintain some privacy. I mean, it's, it's his job. I mean, he has a family mm -hmm. too. So that, that part's understandable, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he gave me, he did tell me his whole name for the sake of this situation. I'm just going to say officer C. Um, oh, okay. Got, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, um, if our, okay. So do you know factually what his name is? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So hold that in the back of your mind. If the friend um, needs that, um, you would have to obviously network with this other person. But but okay. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, and then what? Okay, go ahead. So then, um, but the other officer never announced his name or where which county he was from. I just know there was a second officer there. He never said a word, actually. He was a lot like my friend. He just stood there. And the reason why I know he just stood there is because I asked my son, I said, well, there was another officer there I heard, right? And he said, yes, he just stood there the whole time. He did not utter a word. Did, did you have any sense on the, on the age of these officers, perhaps? Again, I'm not, I'm not justifying any one thing here. I'm just, you know, we just have to think about all, all of the variables of this whole scene. Do, do you have a sense that this officer who did identify themselves, were they significantly older? Did, did they sound older than the guy who was just standing there? I mean, I guess if he was standing there, he wasn't saying um, anything. But... The, one of them, the one that was standing there, I have no idea. But yeah. the one that did talk to me, the one that kept yanking on my arms, mm -hmm. I would say he was probably in his 
40s, 50s. I mean, not an old guy. So Um, maybe like a middle-aged guy. Maybe he had been working for maybe 10 years or something at least, maybe. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I would say that. Okay. Um, And so I, I then said, like I said, I said to him, okay, since you're here, um, all I'm all I'm going to want from you then is a report letting me know that you understand that they are rejecting me from entering this ride based on my disability. And he said, yes, I'll write that report. And I said, okay, well, it seems to me though that you're not clear as to why you're having me get out of line. Do you understand what's going on here? He said, yes, they told me there's a rule that you can't ride this. I said, but do you understand that this is discrimination? He said, well, they tell me there's a rule. It's their rules. We have to just respect their rules. Right. And so, so he's, you know, so he's, so, you know, from a legal standpoint, he's right because it's his, it's his job. Okay. To, to, to keep the peace. Right. So, it, so it's not, it's not, and it's not appropriate. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be even if he secretly did understand the whole time or agreed with you the whole time, that wouldn't have been a, appropriate or professional for him to say out loud. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a police officer and yes, he rolled. You guys are wrong for discriminating against someone with a disability. He couldn't say that out loud at the time. Um, Ex- it was yes. his, it was his job to, to maintain peace and order. So the, it sounds to me like the reasoning why you were actually removed from this environment from removed from this ride is because th- is because they th- is that SeaWorld determined in my estimation that you were number one disrupting the peace number two trespassing that's what he said right but I paid to enter okay, and I wasn't cor- I wasn't cor- correct correct un- un- understood but from from the legal point they're gonna have they're gonna say mm-hmm. that you trespassed because why because you entered property that someone else didn't want you to be on it doesn't see it doesn't cover the right. fact that it was ethical or not or that you're blind or not what happened was a person entered a place where they should where apparently someone else didn't think they belonged mm-hmm. and unfortunately one of the very interesting parts about philosophy and law is that sometimes law doesn't include opinions or feelings and american law is like this in my in my estimation and this is a really really good example of where yes. they really had no choice they determined probably that if guests misbehave in the park and create a liability for SeaWorld, then SeaWorld has no choice but to press to trespass on the person for their own legal sake. So, I mean, not, none of this is okay. You're totally fine. You're totally in the right. I'm just telling you, most likely, those are some of the things that they could probably get away with saying in this, in mm-hmm. this whole scenario. All right. So I imagine and, that's, that's what they'll say. Well, and I, and I don't know what they'll say again. My, my, our friend will take a closer look and let us know who's right, who's wrong, how much I got, how much of this I'm confused about, but um, <clears throat> okay. So you're starting to walk away. I'm, I'm hoping if it was me at this point, I would have been, I would have been just so, so pissed off. I would have just said something to the effect of, okay, well, I, I, I tell you what, let me just leave the park. You know, it's not, Nothing personal. It's not worth an arrest over SeaWorld. Uh, it, it's no, really not. it's really not. not. Um, the mm-hmm. only problem, though, is, sure. um, and I thought of it, and my my son and my my friend, we were like, we know what, we should just get out of here. Let's just go home. But the issue is, we lived in different parts of, um, you know, we live like twenty miles away, <laughs> and Uber ride was going to be quite a hefty amount. Um, so we said, you know what, our ride is not scheduled. We were going to uh, take access links, which is, um, the door to door service. Mm -hmm. It wasn't scheduled to late in the evening. So then we said, you know what, we have no choice, either pay another $70 to get home (laughs) or just kind of stick through the rest of the day and make the best of what's left of it. Um, so uh, but just to kind of finish up the, 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 the whole police interaction, though. So I got out of the line and I asked the officer for his card and uh, the report. And he said, well, I can't give you the report, but I'll give you the docket number. 
I okay. said, oh boy, okay. All right. So I have right. the docket. This number. is actually quite. This is actually quite good. Actually, this is. There's a lot of good in this. There's a lot of things that count count for you in this situation. Yeah. So he gives me the docket number for the police report, and then while I'm standing there and chatting with him and letting him know that you know, um, you know, I'm going to look into this a lot more thoroughly because a lot of it didn't make sense to me. This is all news. Um, unexpected news from what happened last week in comparison to this week. So then um, the the manager who had pulled my son aside, um, he said to me, "Uh, would you like me to go get the vice president? He might be able to clean things up for you a little bit to make sure you understand what's going on here. I said, okay, that's fine. So then he went and got the vice president and he came out and talked to me. And um, I said to him, you know, I'm really upset with the way I've been treated today. And he said, you know, it's the rules. It's not us who made the rules. The manufacturer made the rules, just the whole, the the same mumbo jumbo, um, the same mumbo jumbo all over again. And then I said, well, you know, what can you offer me for all of this distress that I had to go through today? And he started with, well, what would you like me to give you? (laughs) And I said, well, you know, it's not even about what you can give me. It's just, it's been a horrible experience because I came here just to have a fun time with my family and my friend. Um, But now it turned into this really horrible, horrible experience. And I said, you know, can I just have your card and your name? Because I want to write to you and be in touch further. And um, he gave me his name. He said he didn't have his card on him, but he gave me his name. He wrote it down for me. Okay. And then um, he said, well, you know, since you're here, I'm sorry this happened. Enjoy the rest of the park if you can. And I said, well, I guess I will try to make the best of it. And um, so that's pretty much how it all ended. Um, and I, I, like I said, it was either take an uber and pay another 70 dollars for you know me and and well 70 dollars for me 70 dollars for my friend because we're going in different directions um or just kind of stick it out and you know kill the next couple of hours until our uh, you know uh, van would come for us so that's what we did um you know we went and ate and just um really kind of kept it low key after that we went on a couple of rides which wasn't an issue for it was actually there was no issue with any of the other rides um so we did that and then we just ate and hung around and and left but um i'll tell you it was the most uncomfortable experience that i've ever experienced um the most stressful experience at, at, at a amusement park. I've never had such horrible, horrible experience like that. All very odd. Um, so when you went home or in, in, and in the days past, as the days went by, so what research have you done about this whole history of this situation? I would, I would want to ask, um, what history has this park had with accidents? Well, um, interestingly enough, um, I got on Facebook and started to do a little bit of, you know, seeing, you know, other other people complaining about incidences. And there was another incident that happened um, the day before that I went, I guess there was a mother there with their child who had uh, autism. And the child is two and the child refused to put the mask on and same situation they called the cops and um, security threw her out of the park um so it sounds to me from a lot of the research that i'm doing um still kind of unraveling some information um it sounds to me like they have a history of very little tolerance um and very their staff are not very trained with handling people with disabilities period Um, no common courtesy, no, you know, um, 
you you just have to approach different situation in, in a very uh, in a very delicate way, and it sounds to me like their staff are not very trained to handle um, you know sensitive situations, and so they just get aggressive automatically without really um, trying to handle the, the situation in a very diplomatic way. I mean, my situation did not have to escalate to that because all I kept saying was just tell me what's going on here. Last week, there was one rule and now there's a different rule. I don't understand this. And if someone would have just pulled out the flyer that says, after researching, I found out there is a flyer that says, if you're pregnant, if you have a heart condition, um, do not ride Infinity Falls if you are severely visually impaired. Now that was never read to me while I was at the while I was at the park and kept asking, please tell me where is this written? What do you what is this that you're telling me? No one read that to me. No one said it to me. They just kept pointing to my son. And um, the manager at one point said, come, I'll show it to you. And he showed it to my son, but never read it out loud to me. And so that was my problem. Like, so okay well let's let's go through the list so are uh, so are you pregnant no okay do you have a heart condition no okay are you severely visually impaired i don't think so no okay are you blind or not are you, are you blind well i am blind but okay you're visually impaired okay i'm visually impaired yes okay. but so the answer to the third one is yes so then you see in this whole equation you do meet the criteria for being rejected from the ride you you do you do meet the you do fall into the category of someone who's not allowed to ride it. Now, I would ask, well, what is it about this ride that could be so dangerous for and someone? And I asked that as well. I said, well, what what why does this pose a safety issue? I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And they could not answer me. All they kept saying is that it's yeah. not our decision. The manufacturer made that decision. Yeah, and well, I probably... said, but I didn't buy my tickets from the manufacturer. I bought my right. tickets of from co- SeaWorld. Of course you did. Right. No. And th- this, t- I've heard of these types of things before. I mean, I've dealt with it where sometimes there's a sign that says, you know, don't ride this ride. If you've had open heart surgery, as a matter of interest, I have had open heart surgery when I was an infant, um, bit of a long story. So probably probably some of what the park is saying is true and then other parts are not true the thing that i can imagine is i can imagine that they can design a ride that is not safe for people with disabilities that is it's not right but it is possible um and so, you know, if the park wants to have some strange thing where they say that, you know, this ride, you cannot be on this ride. Well, if, if there's a, I mean, it's not right, but if there's a factual reason why you would be putting yourself in danger as a blind person riding that ride, then that would be, you know, something that I would, I would have some understanding of, you know, because I wouldn't like to be told I can't ride a ride either, but I know I wouldn't ride a ride if it was going to put me in physical danger, right? So, you know, that, that would be the type of thing that I would look into exactly. Well, based on what I've been reading, it says manufacturers says that if there was, um, you know, if I had to evacuate, there would be a, a, you know, there would be a, I guess, a safety concern there for them. Um, but it's unclear to me why that would be a safety concern because you're sitting on this boat like thing and you have a seatbelt wrapped around your lap and it takes you up and down and um, different so like elevations. A, so it's like, oh, it's like, a, is it like a huge roller coaster or like kind of like um, more like a graceful roller coaster that kind of gives you different s- sensory, like. I mean, it yeah, gives you didn't you different ride. sensory. It, it, yeah, it, that's it, what it sounds like. You go to different elevations. You go up and zip down and all that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, what, I mean, like I said, what doesn't make any sense to me? And I said it to them. I said, how can you get a ride 
that would exclude a group of people. And that's what I said to the vice president um, when we were kind of closing out our conversation. I said, that doesn't make any sense that you're telling me it's manufacturer, but you guys bought something that would exclude a group of people like myself. And all you can tell me is it's not you, it's a manufacturer, but I didn't buy my ticket from a manufacturer. I bought my ticket from SeaWorld. And so now it's, you know, really your issue. And he, of course, said, no, it's not our issue. And it's a matter of opinion. <laughs> I said, well, it's not an opinion. As far as I'm concerned, you guys have failed us. And he said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but we're just going by the rules. Well, and, and the other thing that might have happened, too, is maybe the manufacturer's lawyer, who knows if their lawyers met with SeaWorld's lawyers and told SeaWorld's lawyers under no circumstances are these people allowed on this ride. And there might have been some weird legal back and forth where they said it's legally a, a liability or some weird thing like that. Um, but all, all of this is is quite is quite odd. So apart from but doing, what yeah, yes, what yes. is puzzling for me is that if this if this is truly a rule, it's not consistent across the board because the week prior. December 22nd, we were yeah. there and wrote it, no problem. My hmm. son wrote it, like I said, three or four times that day, no problem. Hmm. And when I went on social media, I learned that there was other people's children, totally blind child who wrote it multiple times, no problem. Um, so it's, if it is truly a rule that they have, it's not consistent. And that's what I kept saying to them while I was there. I said, how can you have a rule that changes one week to the other? And they said, well, we need to investigate and see what staff were on duty, why they let you on, because that should have never happened. I said, well, that's, that's really not my issue. That's, yeah, that's, really... that's, his, that's his problem. Either it <laughs> sounds like either... And I, 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 I don't know. I mean, there could there is it is is it possible for there to be some thing that the manufacturer told SeaWorld? Is it possible that they told them not to let blind people on the ride? Yes, it is. Um, and but it's, if it's that also, is the case, it's also possible. Is... It's also possible at the same time that either they're making up a lot of this, which I doubt. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot, I, I really have no idea. There's a lot of, there's a lot of holes in this, in this whole story, not in, and um, what I mean is there's a lot more information we would need to, to understand. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe the other workers, the other weeks, um, maybe were apparently not trained on these quote unquote laws or rules. Mm, so that yes. could be it too. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to tell. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was my very um, argument. It's like, how can you have a rule that um, is not consistent across the board? And if one staff knows about the rule, but the next staff doesn't, then how does it become a rule that is really across the board? And I, of course, I will say also, you can't walk around and ask everybody, hey, uh, do you, you wear glasses? Are you visually impaired? Like, how can you do that? You just can't. And, you know, my son actually with corrected lens, he doesn't have any issues, but he did have his glasses off um, at the time because he was going to go on the ride and because he knew he was going to get wet and didn't want his glasses getting, you know, wet or getting um, sliding off his face or whatever. He just said, you know, he wanted to keep it in a bag. And so that's what we did. But then when they pulled him aside, everything changed at that point, uh, letting him know that, no, you can't ride it. If technically without your glasses, you're quote unquote, visually impaired. And he was answering like a child should, you know, honestly. And um, so that's, there goes the problem. If you have a rule that all your staff are not aware of, then it's really not a rule. Um, and you can't just arbitrarily just change right. the rule week to week. No, no, most definitely not. That's not, if it is a rule, they need to enforce it appropriate or not. I'm just saying in, in a very general sense, um, mm -hmm. it sounds like that uh, 
sounds like there's some probably some untrained uh, staff who are working in this in this park environment, um, which is quite surprising to me. But then again, why am I not surprised? Uh, would be the better question. Well, I guess mm -hmm. for me, what I'd like to see going forward. Yeah. Um, so what, and yeah, and that's, and, and if, and if you do talk to our friend, one of the questions that this friend will ask you, or I would, if I uh, uh, was in the same line of work as the friend is, so what do you want the con, what do you want to see happen? The consequences for this situation to be moving forward now? Um, I think overall, there really needs to be sensitivity training for the staff towards okay. people with disabilities, mm -hmm. more awareness. Um, you know, if I have a cane, it doesn't mean that I can't navigate. Um, there's different degrees of blindness. And I just feel like you can't decide whether I, you know, what my visual cue it is just because I'm carrying a cane that's not for you to decide just by looking at me. Um, and if I fold up my cane, I can pretty much get by without no one knowing. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, it's just not fair that there's, um, they have these, these really weird standards that they're implementing. So I like to see sensitivity training for the staff to be more aware of disability issues and to be more sensitive to the disability population, whether it's me, an adult or a child who's two years old refusing to wear a mask um, because they have uh, sensory issues or of some sort. Um, not to say that wearing a mask is not an important thing, but I know there's different ways you can handle different situations to make it pleasant for the, um, for the park goers, not make it really horrible experience um and definitely not a traumatizing experience like i went through it with my son um you know having to be intimidated and be scared that we were all going to be arrested right there on the spot for just asking questions um so definitely um more awareness and really they need to make the rules clear if they have a sign that spells it out it should be really visible um, to everyone including me make it accessible to me if i ask for documentation hand it to me in braille or hand it to me in a format that will show me this document hey here's what our our rules are um, but not providing me any document and just giving me verbiage and tugging on my arm uh, to get out of the line and just getting very aggressive with us, um, cornering us, circling us, and really intimidating us was not the way to handle this situation. And it really left me with a bad, bad taste. Like, if I never go to SeaWorld, I will not regret it kind of feeling. And it shouldn't be that way for me or any other park goers. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, that's, that's basically, I think that basically sums up that, that, that whole story. Um, so, uh, more, more importantly, mm -hmm. I'd sure. like to just add, yeah. I just want to be a voice to let other people know, you know, especially in our community, there's so much stuff that goes on. People don't realize there's so much discrimination that happens. And if, we don't speak up, it will happen to the next person and it will continue to happen. And I remember so many stories from the past where there was injustice and discrimination towards people with disabilities. If people did not stand up against it, those things would exist still. But because right. there were so many who came before me who said, no, you can't deny me access on a bus or you can't tell me that I can't have a child because I'm blind. You know, if so many people didn't step up and demand change, we would still have a lot of those rules, laws against our freedom, you know? So I feel like as someone who really want change and support change, 
I just want people to know this is what's going on. And for it not to happen to the next person, I want to be, I want to mobilize that change because we should have equal access. Right. And how are you, um, what are some other activities you do, you know, um, in life, in your free time and things like that? Well, I love walking. I'm a walker. I love going outdoors and walking. Um, we actually just got a tandem bike. So I am excited about that, using that quite a bit. Um, I love water. So I, uh, I love going into water and traveling. I love, love traveling. But unfortunately, with COVID, I've been kind of um, staying put. So I haven't been traveling a whole lot. Um, but those are really my, um, you know, my funnest things to do on a regular basis. And of course, being with my family and cooking good food and just having a relaxed day, um, you know, would be enjoying a good book and going for a good walk. Those are my funnest things to do. Well, very good. Have you thought about getting into YouTube or podcasting? I haven't. Um, but my son, actually, he's been talking about it. Um, he is starting a little business. Um, we're still kind of tweet, tweeting or tweaking. And this, is, and, this is, and this is the 12-year-old you're talking about? The 12-year-old, yes. He is taking an entrepreneur class and he's um, starting his business. He's going to be launching it um, in the next coming weeks. And one of the things he wants to go along with the launching is a YouTube channel. So um, be on the lookout for that. I'll, I'll share that with you. Well, can you give us a little taste of this business of his? <laughs> oh, of course. So um, my son is really um, wanting to get kids motivated, kids in their own neighborhood motivated to help each other and, um, uh, you know, other neighbors around. So he's creating, um, without giving it all away, he's trying to create a network of young kids who just want to help their next door neighbors. Hmm. So that's interesting. Yes. Remember back in the days when we were young, we would go out and shovel snow for our next door neighbors or, you know, go and um, pick up the mail for uh, Miss Smith or, you know, just walk the dog for, you know, um, you know, our next door neighbor, the elderly or whatever the case is. Uh, run little errands that are, you know, within the neighborhood. Back in the days when we were young, that was totally something you would find kids doing. Nowadays, it seems like kids are just so disconnected and more of their um, interaction is online, but not a whole lot of neighbor, you know, neighbor friendly connections. So He's really um, excited to do that and have been doing it and said, you know, I, he wants to inspire other children to do the same. Well, that's, that is really interesting. Um, well, I, I tell you what, um, I have a rule on my podcast that I do not uh, interview children for any reason. Um, but in a few years, when your son grows up, if he's still doing that business, he should certainly get into podcasting and certainly talk about that because some sort of a help network, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, that could be very, very, that could be very useful uh, if it's done, you know, properly, I suppose. And oh, yes, um, yes, that's those are the things that we're kind of working on to make sure it's, um, you know, there's safety measures in place, of course, um, because we know we live in a world now, we have to be consciously aware of everything. So right. um, those are the things that we're, we're trying to tweak 
and make sure that we are covering all of those things. Mm -hmm. And of course, the whole idea also is to get families involved with their children doing different activities while helping. So right. that's, that's the other um, good, good part of it too. You know, if you, if you want to help your neighbor walk the dog, it's okay for mom or dad to just help you do that task um, while helping somebody else. You get to spend time with your family as well. So, mm. Mm. yeah, I think if that's managed right, um, I think that could be that could be very, uh, very, very. That could be a really, really, really good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So that we're we're still working through some of the um, some of the details of it, but that's that's the premises of it is mm. to really get other kids to inspire other children to help their neighbors and get involved and connect with their community. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. I see. Yeah. I mean, how would he reach out? How would he inspire other children to be helpful? So I think, um, like I said, we're, we're, we're going to be launching the, he's going to be launching his, um, his YouTube in the next coming weeks with the with a website that he's creating. He loves coding, so he's actually coding um, his own site, and um, mm -hmm. he's going to be launching it. And um, we will be looking for, you know, lots of other things to add to it. But I think for starters, we'll start with very close communities that are, um, you know, that there's a good community good close community where you know most families know each other and um so we'll, we'll start very small to start off with just to kind of get the idea up and running <clears throat> and then um as we um you know as as we get it more perfect <laughs> as we perfect it more uh, we'll start to really kind of uh, venture out to other communities and things like that so awesome uh that could be that could be a lot of fun uh that could be very incredibly useful really 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 inspirational o overall okay well um so if you could ask me only one question uh question as i say to really you know, to really make me sweat, to really see if I'm, you know, worth my salt. What do you want to ask? How are you changing or how are you turning the page for 2021? What new things are you working towards? Big goals, small goals. What, is, what are you envisioning for 2021? I'm only envisioning or working on the goal of helping as many people in the blindness community as possible by providing them with this model, this podcasting model as a way to educate people and the way for you to tell your story. So I think if we keep doing that, I think we will be kind of on, on the right track, but who knows? Awesome. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for your service to the community. I think it's so, it's so needed. And I appreciate you taking this time to, to let me share my story. My pleasure. You are always, you are always welcome on Aaron's opinion. And um, if someone wants to get in touch with you personally about this episode, um, do you want to give a plug? Do you want to tell people how you could be reached if someone wanted to reach out to you? Of course, you can reach me via email at s like Sam dot L O V E W I S D O M at gmail.com. So S dot love wisdom at gmail.com. Okay. We'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can look into for this. That's all I've got. That's all I have. Um, don't forget that you've been listening to Aaron's opinion, the podcast for blind people, where we certainly talk about critical issues in the blindness community, like SeaWorld and helping our neighbors. So 
um, to reach me, uh, as I say, Aaron's Opinion 6 at gmail.com. A A R O N S O P I N I O N 6 at gmail.com. 1 240 681 98. Six, nine. Um, and you can, of course, comment below, follow on Facebook, Twitter, even consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page. Okay, everybody. Um, well, I'm sure we will be having many more episodes with Daisy and know that you are certainly welcome anytime you like to come on to Aaron's Opinion and tell us how things are going with the business, how other things are going. So Know that you're always welcome here and know that, um, yeah, you're always welcome. All right. I Thank wish you, you so much. my pleasure. I wish you the very best of health, very best of luck with everything. And I wish the world very good health, as I say, uh, for a strong 2021, of course. And as we say on this podcast, do you, do you know how I end my podcast? Have you taken a listen to know how I end? Actually, I don't. How do you end? Tell me. It's very easy. I can tell you by ending it by saying, 